All right, let's uh, get started, everyone. Welcome to today's session, Choose Your Own Adventure, Motivating Students Through Choice and Flexibility. I'm just gonna turn the time over to our presenters, Michelle Burrows and Kenna Kessler. So take it away. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you very much um, for having us. As I share my screen here, We're, we wanted to welcome you all uh, this afternoon and thank you for being here. We hope you are enjoying your ETE conference. Uh, I know it's getting later in the afternoon after lunch, that kind of thing. Um, but we wanted to welcome you all to our session, choosing uh, to integrating uh, flexibility into your face-to-face -face classes uh, and online classes. Today, we're going to share some ways that we've integrated flexibility into our classes and hopefully uh, help you come up with some ways that you can uh, integrate flexibility into your classes while meeting students' individual needs and interests. We're going to start by covering some background uh, and um, uh, behind why we add flexibility to our courses. Um, why it's important, and then discuss some examples of how we have done this uh, in our own classes and help you plan out some activities um, that and, and some teaching strategies that you can use in your online courses. So in the way of introductions, my name is Kenna Kessler. I'm a lecturer in the Agricultural Communication Program, and I started in January of 2020, so right before this big whole thing that happened called COVID-19. So flexibility has definitely been a huge part of my career and teaching experience here at USU, as well as something that I think is really important to students. And so as part of that, I've taught anything from an introductory course all the way up to a 3000 level CI course. I've taught face-to-face, -face, web broadcast, fully online, hybrid, you name a modality, I've probably dabbled in it at some point. When I'm not in the classroom, I love to be outside. I like to run, hike, fish, just really enjoy the beautiful nature that um, Utah has to offer. And I also love to travel and visit and see new places. You can see a picture of me there where I was in Oregon going crab and salmon fishing. And that was such a fun adventure for me. And then I love food of all types. Ice cream's my favorite. So working at Utah State definitely has some bonuses being so close to Aggie ice cream. And I love the lemon custard and true Aggie night flavors. Those are my favorite. So if you haven't had a chance to try those yet, I highly recommend them. So as was already mentioned, uh, my name is Michelle Burrows. I'm a temporary assistant professor here at Utah State and I have a PhD in current technical education. Prior to coming to Utah State, I was a high school agricultural education and natural resources teacher and FFA advisor. Uh, here at USU, in addition to teaching courses in the CTE uh, teacher education program, I also teach a breath level life science course. And um, I'm a teacher at heart and a lifelong learner. And I uh, like Kenna, I love being uh, outdoors and in nature and no matter the season or the weather. I also love gardening and I've always loved food. And ever since my son uh, has become a chef, he has really opened my eyes to trying uh, so many different foods that I love trying that food, new foods now more than ever. Uh, I also love traveling, uh, especially to places that I've never been. And it's on my bucket list to visit every national park in the US. So before we discuss how we implement uh, flexibility, we really need to answer the question why we need it in our classes. So at a time when so much has been occurring around us uh, that's been out of our control, integrating a more learner-centered pedagogy into our courses offers students a measure of control. Learner-centered pedagogy evens out the balance of power, ensuring that students actually feel empowered in their courses. It also adjusts the role of the teacher, focuses on content functionality and purpose in the process of evaluation. But more importantly, it allows students to take more responsibility for their own learning. 
The theoretical framework that guides us is Desi and Ryan's self-determination theory. This theory suggests that when three universal psychological needs for an individual, uh, which include competence, autonomy, and relatedness are met, the individual will experience increased intrinsic motivation and improved mental health, which has been especially important recently. Now, there are many ways that uh, integrating flexibility into our courses can be beneficial both for teacher students and for us as instructors. Research shows that providing students opportunities to make choices in a course results in students being inspired to participate and complete assignments, engage more fully with the course content, and are overall more successful in the class. So we keep throwing around this term flexibility, and, and the question is, what does that really mean? And we're not using any formal definition of flexibility as part of this presentation. What we want you to think of when you hear the word flexibility is just accommodating for students' natural curiosity, their interest, providing some level of student autonomy within your classes, like Michelle mentioned earlier. And this is really just providing students with a greater range of options so that they can take control of their learning. And this might look different in every single classroom and for every single different type of teaching style. So as part of today's presentation, we'll share some examples with you of what we've done in our classes, but we want you to be thinking about ways that you can integrate flexibility into your own classes, and we'll have an activity later on that will really be focused around that kind of an idea. All right, so as promised, some examples of ways that we integrated flexibility into our own classes. So first off, I'd, share, I'd like to share two examples from my online course. Um, the first is a speaker series assignment that I implemented into a 3000 level online class. And this really came about because a lot of students would say, you know, I love this content. I just wish we could see more professionals in the field or hear how they're implementing some of these concepts or hear from outside sources, et cetera. And I kept seeing this over and over again. And I'm like, how do I do this in an online asynchronous course? How do I provide this you know, need that my students have indicated and help them really achieve what they want to get out of my class. And so I sat down and, and I thought about it. And this is where I came up with a speaker series assignment. And I'm sure many of you have either attended something similar or maybe you do something similar in your courses. But I lined up a series of speakers on a series of topics that related back to the course content. So for example, I'd have career services come in and talk about how to evaluate and negotiate um, job offers, or I'd have another expert come in and talk about good um, interviewing techniques, things like that. And then what I let students do is choose one of those sessions that they would like to attend and that appealed to them um, and their particular interests. And so they were all set at various times, whatever they were most interested in. And so if someone wanted more practice interviewing, they can go to that one. If someone wanted to learn a different topic, they could go to that one. Now, I did mention that this is an online asynchronous course, so I didn't think it was necessarily realistic to require everyone to go to something that was held live. And so I did provide another alternative assignment looking at the key objectives of that assignment, which was to allow them to collaborate with professionals and talk about how some of these principles apply in those fields. And so I let them go ahead and interview someone based off of um, similar topics that we've talked about in the class, and they can turn that in instead. So there was various levels of autonomy there. They could choose the topic, they could choose the time, they can choose the person, and students loved it. I got a lot of positive feedback on that. They enjoyed it. They thought it was a good addition to the class, kind of low straight low stakes, low stress, but something that was fun and engaging for them and met that need that they'd indicated to me. Another example in my classes, I do a collaborative learning project. So I teach a professional communication class and a lot of the documents that we're teaching relate to a business setting. And I thought, you know, what's a fun way that I can engage students in ways to, you know, write something that's like an email or something like that, that's not just boring writing assignment after writing assignment after writing assignment. And so we introduced a collaborative learning project and these students get together and create little mock companies and then they practice some of these writing assignments within their mock company. Now, what I do is I let them choose what their company is. I don't assign, hey, you're Google, you're Carhartt. I let them choose and cater their company to their own interests. So I've had students say they're all aviation students. It's really popular for my aviation students to set up some kind of drone company. My plant science students love to set up some kind of, um, I've seen greenhouse, landscaping companies. 
And then a lot of students like to do travel companies because that's something they're interested in and something that they like to engage with. And I noticed that when students have something that they're passionate about, they tend to get a lot more involved in these assignments. They like to brainstorm, they like to be creative. And so that assignment has been really fun to watch them flourish in that capacity by letting them choose their own company as well as what roles they wanna play in that company. So I'll go ahead and share a couple of examples of ways that I've integrated flexibility into uh, my courses. Uh, the first one is a bingo card that I implemented into my USU 1350 class. So this is a breath level life science class and it's made up of mostly freshmen. In fact, this past semester or this past fall semester, there were 43 different majors represented in the class. Um, so primarily students are taking this class to fulfill a graduation requirement. They're not taking this class because they're interested in science. Uh, in fact, of the 195 students that were enrolled, there were actually only two students that were science majors. So for my course, the purpose of implementing the bingo card was to offer students some choice and some flexibility. Uh, the assignments on the bingo card were designed to measure student learning, but it allowed them to pick topics that they were interested in the most and the medium that they used to demonstrate their learning. Students were also able to select the assignments that fit into their schedule best as the, the assignments were due throughout the semester. Um, integrating the bingo card not only offered flexibility to the students, but it also offered a measure of flexibility to me as the instructor, uh, especially um, in that fall semester as students were invariably affected in some way by COVID-19, having the flexibility of this bingo card of assignments um, that we could choose from really helped the students. Um, it allowed them to complete those assignments that they had missed while not feeling overwhelmed or buried uh, by things that might be piling up. Initially, when I implemented the bingo card, students were confused by the ability to choose their own assignments. This was a new concept to many of them. And at first they were really apprehensive. They had a lot of questions. Um, and once I realized this, I provided um, a little bit more support in the beginning of the course. And it has grown to be one of the most popular uh, components of the class. Uh, I've done this uh, several times now uh, and I've tweaked it a little bit each time and I, I I think it's getting, it's gotten better, uh, but the students have really grown to love it. Um, another way that I've in, uh, integrated flexibility into my classes through the use of unlimited quiz access. So in this particular course, uh, each topic has a quiz associated with it that students take at the end of the module. Uh, for that content specifically. The flexibility here is in the accessibility of the quizzes. So I've created question banks for each of the quizzes, which are open for two weeks. Those quizzes are open for two weeks and students have unlimited access to those quizzes so they can take them as many times as they'd like. Each quiz uh, has anywhere from five to 10 questions and the quiz banks have about three times as many questions as each quiz. This means that as students continue to take those quizzes, they'll see different questions each time. And eventually, if they take them enough times, they may see all the questions. Uh, this provides students uh, several opportunities to really, um, they, they feel uh, more empowered in this because they get to take the quizzes as many times as they want if they want to impact their grade. Maybe that's something that's important to them. Uh, maybe they want to use it as a study tool to make sure that they uh, know the material. Uh, if they only have time in their schedule and they can only take it once, that's fine as long as they have completed it. Um, it's completely up to them. And the feedback that I've received from students related to this uh, is, has been really positive in their ability to uh, take the quizzes at their convenience during that two-week period. They can positively impact their grade uh, if that's important to them. And it actually probably the most um, uh, common comment that I've received is that it reduces anxiety related to taking these tests because they realize that they can take it again um, and it's a relatively low stakes, low stakes test. 
So what we'd like to do, um, we've shared, Ken and I have shared a few examples from our classes uh, in ways that we have implemented flexibility. And so we'd like to get you kind of thinking about how you could um, implement flexibility into your classes. So Kenna is going to drop this URL into the chat and we'd like you to um, follow this and go, it will take you to our Jamboard. Uh, and this first Jamboard, you're going to use sticky notes to think about ways that you could integrate flexibility into your classes. At this point, we're thinking about big picture. Uh, what does flexibility look like in your course. Maybe we've, we've shared several examples. Maybe it's timing, maybe it's um, student choice, those kinds of things. So thinking big picture. And I'm going to head to the Jamboard. Okay, so can you see the Jamboard, Kenneth? Perfect, thank you. So if you haven't used a Jamboard before, you're gonna, once you get there, you can come right over here to a sticky note. I can see that some of you have, um, that's awesome. You're gonna select a sticky note and you can change the color. You can uh, make sure you, after you've typed in it, save it so that we can see it. And I'll give you a few, a minute or so here to add some sticky notes while I read them. Learning contracts, that's, that's an interesting, I'd love to hear more about that. Free late pass. Oh, this is, this is a really uh, good idea, I think, especially um, providing that feedback for students and then helping them implement that feedback. I love that sticky note on retakes of all assignments. I just went to a session earlier that was talking about competency-based learning, and I thought that fit so well with this presentation. And so I, I really like that idea, and I was thinking about how I can integrate that more into my own classes. So that's a great example of integrating flexibility into your course, re retakes on assignments. Look at all these great ideas. Yeah, I've seen a couple say different um, discussion board options. So maybe choosing a topic that they're more interested in. And you do that with your bingo card, right? You let them choose different discussions. Yes, I have several different discussions and then they can pick the one that, that is uh, most appealing to them. Oh, I see a good one here, drop low a score. I've seen that in a couple of classes. Um, and in fact, that was that was recommended in another session during this ECE conference to kind of help alleviate a little bit of that stress a little bit on students who might just have a really bad day or a really bad test and they don't have to have that hanging over their head. For sure, that's that one is, um, I, I think that would be pretty rel relatively easy to implement. I like this idea here about having multiple readings that are focused on the content and then the students get to pick the one that, that they like the most. Oh, and then I wanted to highlight one last one. I think we're, I think we're doing yeah. pretty good on time. Okay. But this person says students choose to watch video or read to prepare for class. And I think that is vital. I, I've definitely noticed that I have students who prefer to read to receive information. And I have students who prefer to watch a video. And I do something similar in my classes where I do a weekly recap um, before the start of every new module. So I'll go through and I'll highlight big things that I noticed, maybe clarify some points from the last week's module and go over some key points to be successful in the next week's module. And I do that as both a written transcript and as a video. And I have had lots of students comment positively that they like that because some days they're busy, they just want to skim. And then some students really need that sense of hearing, seeing that memory to kind of cement the idea in their head. So that's a great option for integrating flexibility at a course level. So now that we've kind of looked at this from a big picture, um, what it looks like in your courses, 
What I'd like to do now is kind of drill down and think about specific assignments um, what, that you could integrate flexibility. Um, one of the ones earlier was mentioned the, the drop the lowest score. So if you wanted to select um, some quizzes and they could drop the lowest score on a quiz. Um, one, one of the things uh, that I'll, while you're kind of thinking, uh, I, when I implemented the bingo card, I looked at the assignments that I was already, that I already had in the course, and I tried to find at least two ways that a student could demonstrate that learning. So, uh, for example, they do a Mythbusters assignment, and some students, I know, like Kenna was just saying, some students prefer to write a paper, some students would prefer to, to produce a video. Um, they can meet the same objective but it's a, a medium in which they uh, feel uh, most comfortable with or more passionate about. And I've actually had students that have taken the more challenging um, option for them because it sounded more fun. Um, and so think about your, um, your assignments, the assignments that you have in your classes and think about how you could integrate some flexibility within those. And we'll do uh, similar to the last Jamboard where you'll use the sticky notes and you can kind of throw a couple of ideas up here that we can talk about. And while you guys formulate those thoughts and add some sticky notes to this slide about specific assignment flexibility, I just like to say, I think really the essential part of doing this effectively is relating back to your objectives, like Michelle said. I really loved you know, there, there's some pros and cons to everything that happened with the pandemic, but I think that there was a renewed focus on making sure that every assignment related back to an essential objective. And that really creates a mindful curriculum because you, you begin to think, well, what do I really want students to take away from this? And then you can find different ways for students to achieve that same objective. It does require a little bit of extra work on your part, a little bit of extra planning on your part, but Sometimes the reward is best for both students and teachers in that sense. Something else that I um, kind of wanted to point out by providing, for me, by providing uh, multiple ways that students can fulfill an assignment, uh, it, it makes grading a little bit uh, more fun for me because instead of reading, you know, 50 papers, I, you know, because it, it's on a bingo card, you know, half of them may write a paper and half of them might produce a video. And so I get to watch some videos. So it kind of changes things up a little bit for me. And it's, it's a little more, uh, it's a more fun <laughs> to grade. I will second that. In one of my classes, um, an assignment flexibility option I have is they have to create an instructional how-to video that relates back to the premise of their company. And I will tell you, it is a lot more fun to grade various how-to videos than the same video over and over and over again on how to set up a tent or something like that. So it does make it a lot more fun for me. And it, I noticed it makes it so I compare my students less to each other and more to the objectives of the assignment. Oh, I like this comment, groups or individuals. So I'm assuming you mean you allow them to complete an assignment either in a group or as an individual. Um, I'd love to talk more about that sometime after this conference, because that's something I, I like to dabble in and see what's more effective. Some students like to work in groups, some students absolutely hate it, right? And so that might be another way you can, you can implement flexibility into an assignment. One of the sessions that I attended earlier uh, related to this letting students record their responses and um, the presenter was talking, uh, talked about how she, the discussion posts were actually videos of students um, recording their discussion uh, response, but then she offered them a, a study buddy option where they could actually record a discussion between 
them and a, and a partner or them and another, you know, colleague in the class, and they posted that as their discussion response. And I thought that sounded like a, a really, a really fun option for students and a little bit, I think that a little bit more engaging, especially when we think about the online discussion. And uh, I know in my classes, I don't get a lot of great feedback in terms of discussions. Uh, I've really worked hard to revamp those a little bit. And I think that's one of the things I'm going to integrate. So we have a few minutes left and I really, really appreciate all of your uh, responses here and, and thinking about assignment flexibility and, and what flexibility looks like in your classes. So before we wrap up, we'd like to end here a little bit, not really end, oh, so sorry. We'll just zip through here. to um, asking what kinds of questions you might have, uh, how, how, what kinds of, uh, what kinds of things that, that you might, maybe some pitfalls that you may have uh, in terms of integrating flexibility or things you may uh, per, for, foresee. Michelle, can I have a question? So when mm -hmm. you have, so Michelle, you have this USC 1350 bingo, they have a lot of different options. Do you have rubrics and guidelines, grading criteria for each of those projects? Seems like a lot of work for you. <laughs> so actually, um, so the answer is yes, but it's not as, as, um, as difficult as you would think because I use the same rubric for um, the assignment. So for the Mythbusters, right, they, they can either write a paper or they can produce a video. I'm essentially using the same rubric for both assignments. One just relates to writing and one relates to video, you know, so I'm, I'm talking about their writing and, and how they write and, you know, no typos kind of thing. And in the video, it's more about voice inflection and are they, um, you know, making eye contact and, and using appropriate editing, that kind of thing but it's basically the same rubric. In terms of the discussions, the di discussions are different, the topics are different, the assignments are different, but the rubrics are the same. So it, it really wasn't, I don't think it's as difficult um, as it might seem. And that really goes back to what we were mentioning early is, earlier is the objectives of the assignment. And it takes a lot of effort as an instructor to go through and clean up those rubrics and make sure that you're only measuring students on what you're actually trying to measure. And then regardless of what the assignment is or how they achieve it, I'm grading them on those objectives. So there might be different assignments, but I'm grading on the same, same criteria. I think I missed it, but can you tell me what, like when they complete the bingo card, what was the, was it a grade or was it a treat or what was the incentive? <laughs> So in terms of the bingo card, the way the way that works is within the first week of the semester, they have to choose like a row or a diagonal or a column that they're going to um, that they're going to complete over the course of the semester. And I'll be honest, setting up the bingo card was probably the most challenging because I wanted to make sure that they're getting that every row or every option has something of the same. Um, component, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, and so they actually can look at all of the assignments for the entire course, the requirements, the due dates, everything, and then they pick that bingo card row. And then they, re they submit that to Canvas for me so that I can see what they've chosen to do. And the first time um, I did this, it was a little bit of a struggle because the students were really they were worried that they were missing an assignment. They would see it in Canvas, uh, but it wasn't in their row. And so they were very worried that they were supposed to be doing this assignment and, you know, even though it wasn't on their row. So I actually uh, started going in, they turn it into me, into Canvas, and then I go in and I excuse them from the assignments they didn't choose that aren't in their row. And so in only the ones they selected show up in their to-do list in Canvas. 
And the students have appreciated that uh, since I started doing that. Um, and then there, those assignments are throughout the semester. So they, the assignments are for a grade. But there, there is a um, maybe to answer your question specifically too, they do get points for turning in the completed bingo card or the selected bingo card. Otherwise, I don't know what they've chosen to do. Awesome, thanks. All right, great. Hey, we're at the end of our scheduled time. So I just want to thank Michelle and Kenneth for their presentation. And I want to thank everyone for showing up and participating and watching. Have a nice day. If you have any questions at all, you can reach out to us, sorry, um, and email us. We're happy to answer any questions you may have. Yeah, sure. And, and to mention that again, you can continue the conversation on the Mighty Networks pages online, and we'll post these videos to the ETE website. All right. Thank you so much.